Well, here we are entering tax season and many things will be a little different this time around. Here to help you get ready to file is Mark Stieber, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt. Good morning, Mark. It's so nice to have you with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, all right, so we're getting ready to do our 2021 taxes. What's the biggest change taxpayers need to know about for this tax season? Well, the biggest change is the change that impacts your taxes and your refund. And there's a lot to pick from for folks this year. Uh, there were changes to unemployment benefits, taxation, charitable deduction, donations. Uh, even if you don't itemize, there were changes to the earned income credit. There were changes to dependent care credit if you have kids in daycare or summer camp. But the single largest one affects millions of families that have young children. They've supersized the child tax credit. It used to be it was a nice $2,000 or $1,400 credit. This year for 2021, it is a maximum of $3,600 per child on your tax return with no limit on that. And that's for the younger children. Older children are $3,000. And even high income earners who don't qualify for that you know, can get $2,000 if they earn up to $400,000 if they're married or $2,000 if they're if they're single. So the long story short, child tax credit for anyone with a child dependent on their tax return could not be more important. To confuse matters worse though, the IRS started paying up to half the benefit early back in uh, July of 2021. So taxpayers may receive up to six advanced payments for half their uh, advanced child tax credit. They'll have to file the credit correctly to get the other half and then pile on top of that any new dependents that happen to be on their taxes because they were born or adopted or fostered in 2021 or just shared custody that rolls on in 2021. Oh my. All of those will get the full amount of that child credit in 2021. Oh my goodness. All right, so there's gotta be documentation. I assume we're getting letters from the IRS that documents all of this. Uh, that all needs to be filed, is that right? And what other documents are really important? Yeah, there'll be a tsunami of paperwork this year, if I don't use the word. <laughs> Uh, just because people are having more W-2s, many people work multi-jobs, they'll get a W-2 for that, just like always, but more of them. 1099s for interest and dividend. There'll be statements, not government or broker statements, but stuff related to your virtual currency. That's gotten more important than ever to watch for those. There'll be statements related to health care. That's still required. There'll be statements for unemployment benefits. Was tax exempt. Now it's back to taxable. You'll need to watch for that. And then there's two new documents to watch for. There was a stimulus payment. The third one seemed like years ago for that third stimulus payment back in March of 2021. You'll get a statement for that. And if you've got new dependents, like I talked about a moment ago for child credit, you may have new stimulus money that's yours. You'll need that stimulus money letter to reconcile for that. You'll have a child tax credit letter if you wanted the 35 million that got advanced payments. You'll importantly need that document because it has how much you got, where it went, direct deposit or in the mail, how many children were on your you know, estimate that they made, and you'll reconcile that on your 2021 return to get the other half plus any new ones. So just a barrage of paperwork. And the important point to remember is simply this. If you're not accurate, and I mean your data matches the IRS data, you'll set yourself up for a week's or month's delay like about 30 million people had last year. So accuracy has a new important point to consider. You just won't get your money for months. So pay attention to those documents collect them in the shoebox, share them with your tax pro, file early and get your big refund faster. Oh my goodness, I think tsunami was a perfect word. Barrage, <laughs> tsunami, all of those are accurate. Well, let's talk about working at home because so many people have done that. If you have a home office, is it tax deductible? Great question, an area just like some of these other unemployment benefits and credits, very confusing. The uh, home office is a deduction that's been around for decades. It's a great tax benefit. Uh, unfortunately, with the supersizing of the American public working from home, with in many cases a office at home with a desk, a chair, a phone, a computer, you know, they have a home office. So it sounds pretty simple. And there's a tax form, home office deduction. Unfortunately, the confusion is simply this. If you're an employee working for a company and you're working at home for the convenience of the employer or out of an abundance of caution or they just closed your office as many have and so you're working from home not by choice you unfortunately do not generally qualify for the home office deduction on the other hand if you have a home office based business self-employed or full-time you know Etsy or uh, Amazon that would in fact meet the qualifying criteria some of the confusion comes from the fact that I just said, if you're an employee, you don't get it. 
Well, if you're an employee with a side business or a spouse perhaps that has a side-based business or for a part-time business out of the home, then you're back in the yes category. So no if you're a pure employee, but yes if you have any kind of home-based activity. And I encourage people to look at that one because it is a very nice benefit. It's a simple model and a complex model, but that can really cut your costs, increase your tax deduction, and frankly increase your refund and help offset some of that uh, other stuff that may be penalizing you on your startup business. Oh so my home goodness. office, no employee, yes if you're home office-based business. Gotcha. So the W-2 really makes the difference there, right? If you're getting paid by an employer yep. and you're working at home, it doesn't count. Okay. And it's easy to catch. So if you put it on there and you're one of these adventurous do-it-yourselvers and you're going to put the home office deduction and the software lets you, if there's not a Schedule C for self-employment, just the home office deduction, you're going to get caught pretty quick. Oh, boy. Did we cover unemployment? Uh, a lot of taxpayers yep. collected unemployment. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunately some of the bad news. I pointed out all the new great benefits and credits. Unemployment, both confusing and not good. It was not taxable in tax year 2020 because of a late law change. Unfortunately, that was 2020 only. In 2021, it's back to full taxable. So you'll probably get a 1099G. And even if you don't, it's still taxable. It goes on your tax return. If you leave it off, the IRS will find out and they will send you a letter. So in short, unemployment benefits, back to taxable, unfortunate though it is for 2021. Oh boy, there was a lot of that as well. Well, thank you, Mark Stever. Boy, you're a wealth of knowledge and information. We appreciate it so much. I think finding somebody to do our taxes this year might be a good idea with all of that facing us. We appreciate it. No, it's gonna be a busy season for you. Appreciate your time, thank you. All, all good, have a great day. Mm -hmm, you too.